Hello everyone, my name's Alex, and this is a, another compilation video of Daryl Brooks being Daryl Brooks. So let's sit back, watch, and analyze the Daryl Brooks trial. I want to bring to the party's attention that the court just now issued a decision and order uh, in this case. I've signed it, uh, Madam Clerk is pulling it through, and I will provide the parties with a written copy here in court. It addresses the matter of subject matter jurisdiction. So we're going to address it? No, I've issued an order. I'm going to give it to you. That's why I'm addressing it. You can review it later, um, but there's a written decision now denying your motion to dismiss. So is, it, is that including verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction? Because it has yet to be verified or proven. Mr. Brooks, you keep making that statement, but it's a misstatement of the requirements in the law. So it doesn't um, have to be proven? You are going to get a written decision. That's how I'm addressing this. And then I'm going to have the jury brought out and just providing courtesy copies to the parties as I uh, had an opportunity to finalize that over the break. Uh, set for value and return for value is document. Thank you for noting that. All right, bring the jury out. State has its next witness, I presume, ready yes. to go? Yep. All right. When the jury's brought out, you may call the witness. Is that verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction? The decision and order speaks for itself, sir. Is it verified proof that you have it? Sir, I believe it answers your questions. I, I don't believe Unequivocally. so. There's no ver verified proof proving yet. There's no verified proof if, if we're in common law or admiralty law. What, what court is this? Sir, I believe your answers will be in that decision and order. I don't believe so. Well, have you read it yet? I don't have to. Okay. I well, accept it for there. value and return for value, so. All right, they're in there, sir. It's a final order. For Verified proof is in there? Verified proof so is in there? So if you'd there? like to challenge that, uh, you can take that up with the appellate courts. Verified proof is in there? All right. Because I don't think it is. Proof of claim is not in there either. No one has a claim. I feel it's important at this time to at least give you the advisement pursuant to special <coughs> material 28. It is regarding your decision on whether to testify. I'm not asking you to make that decision, but since we're on the verge of you starting your case and it may impact your um, opening statement, um, I want it to go through the following. Um, sir, are you aware that you have a constitutional right to testify? I've been informed. Are you advised and informed that you also have a constitutional right not to testify? I'm not advised, I'm informed. Are you advised and informed that the decision whether to testify is for you to make? I don't understand the question. Do you, are you advised and informed that the decision on whether you testify in this trial is for you and you alone to make? I'm informed, not advised. You under, do you, are you advised and informed, sir, that if you choose not to testify, the jury will be advised that they cannot use that against you? In other words, you have that right not to testify. I'm informed. When you make a determination about whether to testify in this trial, I will further be asking you about whether anyone has made any threats or promises to you to influence your decision. I may um, also briefly go over your educational background. Did you hear me say that? No, I'll say it again. At the appropriate time, when we go through this discussion more fully, I will also ask you whether anyone has made any promises to you to influence your decision on whether to testify. Did you hear me say that? I'm informed. And then I will also ask you if anyone's made any threats 
um, or coerced you in any way in your decision to testify or not. Uh, what's the significance of that? So that I can make appropriate findings about the voluntariness, intelligence, and your, um, whether it's knowing voluntary and intelligent, your decision to testify. So whether, whether I give consent. That's not the legal determination that I make. It, it is simply something that is your choice. Um, I will honor your right not to testify. Obviously, that's a constitutional right. I will honor your right to testify. That's also a constitutional right. And the jury will be advised one way or the other. There's a jury instruction on that. Um, did you hear me advise you of all of this? I'm informed. All right. Okay, let's bring the jury out then and we can kind of tidy up the record and then we'll break for lunch. May I remove that uh, exhibit, please? All right. Uh, I think they're right there, so let me just take it. All right, it's happening. Jury already coming out. Yeah, I'll just stick it. Okay, so go ahead and sit it back jury. down. Thank you. Subject matter jurisdiction still hasn't been proven for the record, Your Honor. Should be proven at some point. I want to have those lab analysts testify they're here. And we can take up more fully the issue with Detective Casey um, after they're done testifying. So how late do we plan on going? I will go as late as 6 o'clock if need be. So I want to keep pushing along. I want to... Yeah, that's definitely pushing it here. That's not that late, sir. We've stayed till 5.36. I mean, Previously, there were times during jury selection we stayed till probably 7 or 7.30. On um, the position, last two nights, we did break at about 4.30, 4, 4.45. And so um, I'm willing to go a little bit later tonight. So it's 3.30 now. Was, we'll see how things go. That, I was making that for the, saying that on the record because in my position, that is kind of late. Well, let's start now and we'll get going and maybe we don't have to go that late. So bring the jury out. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? The written decision that I previously entered is what I will stand on. I'm not going to address it any is that, further. Is that verified proof? Sir, my written decision is the decision on is subject it, matter jurisdiction. Is it verified proof? Because it hasn't been proven on the record and that was not verified proof. It has yet I am to be de denying the request by the defendant to verify subject matter jurisdiction. It has That's to denied. be proven for the record. I disagree with you as a matter of law. The show jury's me, coming show out. Show me lawful law. All right, for the jury. Show me by lawful law. Unless you make an attack of agreement that you don't have to prove subject matter jurisdiction on the record by law. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Um, it's about 3.37. I know you're all filing in, so I'll wait till you all get no, in. No. Not yet. Ask this question one more time. Man, it calls for I don't a like, yes or I don't no. like your tone and the way you're talking it, to me. I don't. Mr. I don't Brooks, appreciate it. Sit down. I don't care if no, you don't like I'm, my tone. Gonna, You've been pushing my down. buttons all day throughout this entire okay, trial. And I have shown too? the utmost of respect no, for you. you and I don't Absolutely appreciate not. you impugning the integrity of this court. If that's what I you don't. want to call it, that's fine. But it's Stop not accurate. Stop talking. What you mean, stop talking? I need to make a ruling. Okay, well, I'm purposely not talk, putting you in the to, other courtroom let's right talk to now. to each other like adults then. Mr. Because Bruce, I've never told you to stop talking. Um, I'm going to let the, the state... Sudden, nobody hears what I say. I'm going to let the Come state on, make stop. a record of why they stop. believe it's objectionable because I haven't let... I'm going to ask this question one more time, and if he doesn't answer it, I'll take it as a no. Do you want the opportunity to question Detective Casey regarding either his questioning or meeting up with your mom and your niece and nephew about possible testimony or the jail the search of your jail cell yes or no what was the problem with me asking the question right, about the jail cell my question we'll move on i'm enough. trying to understand if i don't right, we're gonna understand take a break. how do we're i know how do i know what i'm supposed to answer if i don't understand and I don't agree to us. I would like some further direction from the defendant as to who he wants here tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon if he wants us just to continue that list that he originally provided or if there's an update. And we can do that off the record, Your Honor. I don't know that 
we need you involved. Okay. Thank you. Then hopefully the parties can figure that out without me needing to be involved further. But anything from you, sir? Uh, no, I'm just going to say with that, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put them in specific order. Not looking for the order, but we're behind given the timetable and the understanding, as, as I understand it, between you and the state. Uh, so, um, state has the list. So, generally speaking, you've been taking about a half an hour, I would say, for each witness. Um, at least that one took about 35 minutes. If we go on that schedule, do you think, understanding we take a mid morning break, a lunch break, and um, a mid-afternoon break, I would think we could get through at least three to four tomorrow morning and three to four in the afternoon. I'm going to have the parties be available for that and be ready for that, whatever order, but... All the parties? Yes, both you and the state. So, so at this point, there's no telling what witnesses will be here tomorrow, right? Well, per, based on the the groupings that you gave to the state, it sounds like we got through only one from each right kind one. of category. That so we'll go back to the first would have been Thursday morning. You need to call the rest of Thursday morning. Was there two left right. of that? Yes, correct. So we, and so let's do Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon. The people you designated, I'm going to direct the state to have here tomorrow morning. That's four witnesses. Whatever order of those four. Five. It's five. But yes, it's five. We'll, we'll have them here um, based on your original list. And then, how many does that leave? Because I'm that's, not that's what I'm trying to doing good with math this four. late in the day. Four, so four in the afternoon then. So my, our hope is to get through all your witnesses. I can not say this tomorrow. for the record. One that I intend, one witness I intend to call tomorrow is not going to be 35 minutes. Fair enough. Do you plan, plan to call that person in the morning or the afternoon? I'm, I'm leaning towards the afternoon. That could change depending on the flow of the morning, I would guess. If the morning goes pretty Can you tell me which list they were on when you gave it to the state? Was it Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, or Friday afternoon? I didn't put them on days, but I believe they were in the maybe second, maybe the second flow of names. If you just want to tell helps. me who it is so we can prepare so that person is told to come in the afternoon? rather than wait through the morning? I don't want to say who it is. Well, I want the person to be here when we're ready to go, but... They were here today, if that helps. Yeah, I know who it is. It's Erica Patterson, Your Honor. There's maybe, no mystery here. Maybe right. it is, That's maybe what it I isn't. Would have, that's kind of who I thought it would be as well. I, so... Uh, I'm going to have her come tomorrow afternoon. Then. Okay, we will have her here at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So right. we Thank need to be you. mindful of people's <clears throat> schedules. Thank you. Thanks. We'll have so, everyone else here. At that's 8 interesting 30. because what if that was not who I was referring to? Then you need to tell me right now so I can make an alteration to that. Come on, Judge. Sir, we're at the end of the third week of trial. So I need to keep this fair? moving along. Can we along. at least be fair and say that, that, that that's not due to me, though? Um, <laughs> that would not be fair to say. It, how? How? <laughs> the, it's... How? The state said that they would they needed five to seven business days to present their case. Did they or did they not say that on the record? And there's so how how it doesn't did matter I, how we got there at this point. I'm trying my darndest to, to get all the witnesses chop, chop. done. So I'm directing the state to have Miss Patterson come tomorrow afternoon. If that's the what other I was referring witnesses, to, which I wasn't, but everybody think they know what I'm thinking. Then you need to tell them if it's someone else and if you want her here in the morning. I'll say this. Everybody that was here today that didn't get called, have them here tomorrow. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five people. And you need to tell me who you want in the morning, not by the order, and who you want for the afternoon. Otherwise, I'm going to make the order that I just made. No, you, how are you going to make the order for me? 
Under 906.11, sir. No, you can't. I can call. I can call. I have the right to call them in the order that they, the state didn't have to have an order. And I'm, I'm guessing. No, but the state is helping you out in terms of the order. They were helping me out with serving and the And they're subpoenas. helping you. Not so, the order of how I would call the witnesses, but the subpoenas. And I gave the state. Do you want to be responsible for calling each person tonight and telling them what time they need to be here? Or should we let the See, state we do that? This again, there's, there's something that's impossible to do. That's not true. You have How's access to true? a phone. So, so somebody's going to answer a collect call from someone they don't even know. Nobody in this courtroom will answer a collect call from someone they don't even know. Nobody in this courtroom will answer a collect call and pay for That's a phone call from not somebody. My understanding not know. of how it works at the jail that you can that yes. there's other means to make there, phone there calls. There is no there is no other way to utilize the phone. Well, maybe I'm wrong on that, but be that as it may, the state is helping you out. This is this is to make tomorrow go as smoothly as possible, to be effective, to be efficient and to use all of our time wisely. Your Honor, with all respect, I did what, this, I did what was asked of me to do. I provided them with the list of the witnesses that I would call. I just, and I stated before that I would not put them in order and the state accepted the list that I gave them. So why at this point is Who are the witnesses who are here today? Kohler, uh, Douglas Kohler, Detective Guth, Erica Patterson, Christopher Bertram, and Jason Hayes were here today in addition to Ms. Reimer. Ms. Reimer's now done. Nicholas Kirby was also here today. He's done. If we are going to continue to assist Mr. Brooks in getting these witnesses here, we need to have a reasonable time schedule. These witnesses don't just show up by the tooth fairy. We have to communicate with them they have jobs, they have families. I've explained this three times to Mr. Brooks. Hey, hey, if hey. he wants our assistance, Objection. she can chill with all that. She can chill with all that to, tone. Hold on, hold on. I know get it, on that if that's what it hey, is. I know it's been a long day. Let's, let's keep this civil. That's what I'm trying to do, but so she's she going to have to tone it down. I think we, I think both of the parties are getting a little frustrated. I'm getting frustrated. So, I, I'm Kohler, Guth, nice. Hayes, Patterson, I missed a fifth. Bertram. Guth is a police officer, right? Yes. I know who Eric Patterson is. How about Kohler, Hayes, and Bertram? Are uh, those they citizens? Were, they're citizens that relate to the parade, I believe, post. and post parade. Not the DV. It seems to me that when that even with one of the witnesses taking more than 35 minutes, that doesn't fill up the whole day. So we need to have some other people on that list for the afternoon. So I will just continue to work in the order of the list that was provided. Your Honor, I think that's the only reasonable thing we could do at this point. Or we can do it alphabetical or we can do it by random lot because I don't know really what else to do. By the list that was given. What was the order of the list that you were given? The first three were Kirby, Kohler, and Guth. The next line has three names, Patterson, Bertram, Hayes. The third line has three names, Reimer, Aldrich, and Lescano. The last list has two names and then also reads the state of Wisconsin. First three people on the list you need to advise to be here tomorrow at 8.30. Okay. The next two people tomorrow at 10.30. The next two people after that tomorrow at 1.30, and the next two people from there at 3.30, and then do I have any one left over from there? No. Yeah. One more? No. If I have to go late tomorrow, then I would say the last person can be at 4, 4.30, if need be. Yeah, I agree. I, we would very much like to get through the defense witnesses tomorrow, Your Honor. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen to well, that's the uh, order that I'm making in terms of the times people need to show up. That gives you a range of people to select from. I'm going to have to see that, uh, what you're referring to then, because. Well, I trust you wrote it down, because that's what I, I did. I so didn't. 
I we are at recess down. then for the evening. We'll see everyone tomorrow at 8 a.m. Right. So they don't get called like that. Don't try to blame it on me. All right, let's take up the issue of the letter and the photographs and your offer of proof, sir, if you have one. Okay, I don't need no offer of proof. I'll ask you a second time. Do you have an offer of proof we, we to provide, sir? That. We can go past all that. I don't, I don't need to ask them questions. It's too much of an issue. It's too much of a problem. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to ask you for a third time. Do you have an offer of proof related to I just said no. I just said no. I just said that. All right. Thank you. Then based upon there being no offer of proof, then uh, my decision stands. As to the continuation of the examination of Ms. Patterson, I would like an offer of proof as to what you believe her probative and relevant testimony will be from this point forward. I mean, I don't know how she's going to answer the rest of the questions. There's not that many questions left. I was almost done. What topics generally were you going to question her about? I guess I'll have to look in here because so much that happened since over the past hour and a half or so. I can tell you one thing, I, I don't intend to uh, I don't intend to have too many more questions, I tell you that. I was almost finished. I need an offer of proof as to what you believe her testimony would be, meaning what topics? And are they topics that have not already been covered either through her direct examination from the state, your cross-examination, or already covered by your direct? I don't remember her. Uh, what, what do you mean by related to her direct? Is that from the last time she testified? From the from the first date that she testified and from today. I don't what remember, new topics will I don't you remember be? everything she testified to the first time. It was two weeks ago. Well, Mr. Brooks, this is your opportunity to prevent relevant and probative evidence. But under 906.11, she's already been questioned now twice by you. So what new topics do you intend to question her about when she comes back on the witness stand? What do you mean by new topics? Topics that you haven't already covered. What, to pursue to the police report or something? Is that what you're asking? No, I, I don't understand. I'm asking you... I'll ask you once again, sir, give me an offer of proof as to what you believe uh, your questioning will be as to Ms. Patterson going forward. And you say it related to topics, right? You can just give me the topics. I think that's fair. I wanted to ask questions about the police reports. That was the last few questions. That's why I'm saying it was only... Is it a statement that she wrote? I don't know if it's a statement that she wrote in here. Do you, see a, is. do you see a written statement with her signature? I don't have to go through all the paperwork. Is there a written statement from Ms. Patterson? Okay. It's my understanding Detective Guth spoke to her on both occasions. Is that right? Yes, with Detective Barron with him on the first occasion. Detective Barron wrote that first report. Both interviews were also recorded. Previously provided with discovery? Absolutely. What about the police report, sir, do you want to question her about so I know with specificity? Oh, I'm looking at it now. How many officers did reports? Because it seemed like it's more than just two. At least from this paperwork, is more than two. These rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, you are excused for the evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All rise for the jurors, please.